Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade repair video for you today. We've done one of these in the past that was a little less involved, but we figured we would do a new one because I just happened to be working through some of these. So we are working on some light guns for the arcade games. So we've got a Lethal Enforcers we've been working on. Uh, we have some Target Terrors we've been working on. We have some Police Trainers we've been working on. And so we've got a whole ton of these HAP 45 light guns, that they call them, because they look like a 45 pistol, that, which is the most common light gun that was used in any of the arcade games. And so we are... Uh, we haven't repaired any of these that we've, you know, marked to be bad in like a couple of years. I mean, sometimes we'll take one apart and the little optic will be broke or something. Um, so we were just working on one for the Lethal Enforcers and I ran across this and I thought, well, we don't have any of these as backups. And we, we were kind of in a hurry earlier where we needed that, uh, that gun. So I thought, you know what, maybe I should sit down and just try to fix a bunch of these, get complete guns ready that I can have on the shelf so that I know that uh, I've got some that are already repaired. So why not film it for all of our YouTube friends? So if you're interested in any of this kind of stuff, we'll go through some of these and see if we can get any working. I'm going to try something different that I've never done before on these and see if uh, we can figure something out along the way. So basically, here's the top of it. You get these guns in all the time and they get abused a lot because they get dropped on the ground. And so there's a few really common things that go wrong with them. But today I'm actually going to try to fix some of the le the less common stuff that goes wrong with them and see if we can get anywhere. Maybe a big failure, but I doubt it. I bet we're going to fix some. Um, just to give you a scope of how many of these I've got that are broke, probably 30 or 40. Um, there's different variations of it. Um, there's a whole bunch of ones that are exactly the same. I've got these four. Whoa, I've got these four here that are the same. Um, I'm gonna start with them because I've got this gun case laying here and the uh, cable that to where these would be really easy to get going. And then I believe in this drawer over here somewhere. Yeah. So <laughs> I have all of those as well. So that looks like maybe thirty of them. <laughs> right? So I've got a few to fix. We're not going to fix all of them in the video, but I'd like to fix several. Um, so we'll go over it a little bit. Now, right from the beginning, I should mention a brand new one of these is about $25. So if you're buying the, if you're, if you're working on something for your, your home game and you've only got one, just buy new ones. You know, you can try to fix them, but the problem that you're going to run into is this is the photo uh, uh, optic. You know, if uh, I believe that's a photo transistor optic, we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, if you order one of these, well, you have to pay shipping. You know, and then these little LM311 chips, those are they're like twenty cents each. But if you order it, you have to pay shipping. So if you order that and that, by the time you get it in, if that doesn't fix it. You, you know, you're just wasting all kinds of money. Now, if you're me and you've got a whole ton of them, and I use these all the time and I've got parts laying around all over the place, well, it, you know, it makes sense to me because I can, I can fix them up. And, you know, I've got a whole stack of these. I've got a whole stack of these. I've got tons of broken boards, so it's not really going to cost me anything to fix them. So if I can fix four or five of them a day, I make 125 bucks or save 125 bucks. So it makes sense to me. This is more for people who just are interested in this kind of stuff or like saving old things or would just rather repair their original one even though financially it makes no sense to do so. So th these are only about $25. We've got some here that are brand new too um, that we bought for $25. It's a slightly different design, but it works. Uh, so we'll talk about all that here in a minute. So this video is basically just for the fun of it right? So we're just going to do it for the fun of it. So like I said, there are several different types, uh, but of this particular type, we've got this one here that we've been working, messing with. Of this particular type, I've got four that are identical. Now these got so hot and heavy where they were making so many of these back in the day that there are actually bootleg ones like this one. <laughs> 
So this is a copy of the HAP one. HAP made most of the, the gun boards that you see. And this is about the second generation of them. Now, I was looking around, but one of the problems is we don't have schematics to them, but I probably wouldn't understand what they were saying anyway. But uh, this is more of the original style, the very first ones that came out uh, in these 45 style guns. So these were in like Area 51. So we don't have schematics for most of them, but lo and behold, da -da 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 -da. I have looked in the Area 51 manual, and in the very first Area 51 manual, they actually did give you a parts diagram, a parts list, and the schematics. Look at that. So if you've got any of the very first ones, there actually is a schematic for it in the Area 51 manual. You might want to check that out. So back to the type we're going to be messing with. So the reason I wanted to film this was because I opened this up earlier and we were kind of in a hurry. I was trying to get a gun working real quick. Oh man, maybe this one, maybe we can get this one fixed, right? And so I opened it up and this is what I found. So that board, so you, you know, you might look at it and say, okay, well, what's the problem? Well, the problem is this is a photo transistor so it sees light right somebody has replaced it with just a regular LED <laughs> which emits light well that ain't gonna work <laughs> So I thought that was hilarious. Um, so this particular one, so basically what usually happens on these is the legs of the, the optic will break. So a lot of times whenever you pull the, open the thing up, uh, one of the legs of that optic will be broke. So that's the first thing to look at. Also, a lot of times when you pull it uh, open, the harness that plugs in here will be unplugged or partially unplugged. So that's your first things you want to look for. The switch is almost always good. And the way they work is, when you pull the trigger, I've got the trigger laying here somewhere. And there's a spring on here too, but when you pull this trigger, it pushes that little roller cam there. And that click you're hearing is the switch. Okay, so the switch is connected through the hose down to the, uh, the game board. And so when you pull the trigger, the game board goes pow and makes a noise. So you're basically telling the game board to make the noise, right? And then also it makes a big flash on the screen. So to you, it kind of looks like, yeah, psh, that's the smoke from my gun. I just shot somebody up, right? But what it's really doing is that's the secret to how these things work. Um, so when you pull that trigger, the board says, okay, they pulled the trigger and you are pointing at the screen somewhere. So let's say you're pointing at uh, wish I had something to shoot at. They're blowing me up on my phone here, people. <laughs> um, let's see, a Pepsi can. This will work. There we go. Now we got something to shoot at. So you're pointing at the screen at the Pepsi can. Bam! Right. So you pull the trigger. Now, if you do this, that's probably stupid because you're moving across the screen, right? So uh, you pull the trigger at the Pepsi can. Bam! So the board says, "Okay." They just pulled the trigger so that it, it makes the noise, bam, like you shot, and it flashes the screen real bright. Now, since it since these were on CRTs, what that does is it starts scanning the engine the, the image in. Now on a digital screen, it doesn't scan the image in, it just replaces whatever pixels need to be changed. Right? So it does it digitally, a completely different way. But on the old ones, the, the CRTs would actually scan the image in line by line like this, all the way down the screen, back and forth. Well, down, and then it would real quickly go back to the beginning and then do the next line, and then real quickly go back to the beginning and do the next line. So because it does it like that, when you pull that trigger, you're aiming this little optic, which is a receiver, basically. You know, it sees you're aiming this little optic at the Pepsi can, right? And what's more is you've got it hold up inside this little this little shaft you know and you're aiming that at the Pepsi can 
So all it can see is the little tiny thing you're aiming at, right? Like the, the, the pull tab on the Pepsi can. See how that's about all it can see through the end? And then it has a lens on the end to make it even more dramatic, right? <laughs> so you're just aiming at a specific little part of the screen and that's all that, transist that, that uh, photo transistor can see, right? It can just see that little area of the screen right there. And some games were more accurate than others. Others, if you got anywhere within this far, it would work. So like if you were shooting for the, the pull tab and you were over here, it would still hit it. But some were very precise. It just depended on the game. So it starts flashing the screen, right? So here's the screen. And so this is bright. And then this was bright. And this is bright. And it literally, each pixel goes bright as it draws in a really bright screen, right? And it goes all the way down. And it's doing this so quick, your, your mind can barely see the flash. But this electronic sensor is a lot quicker. All of this is working very fast, right? So it, it, it's pointing at that pull tab. And everything on the screen is flashing up. Well, whenever the photo sensor sees the screen go bright, it changes the little signal that it sends through and down the line and everything. And it basically says to the board, hey, hey, I just saw something. I just saw the screen go really bright. And that's all it's looking for. It's just looking for the screen to flash really bright. So it's going, hey, I just saw something. I just saw the screen go really bright. Right? So whenever it does that, it sends a signal back to the board. And the board says, okay, well, the scan was right here, so the gun must have been pointing right there. Is there something on the screen uh, in that area? And so it registers a hit right where the gun was pointed. So let's say you're trying to shoot the pull tab, and you've got it pointed away over here. Well, you would see the flash as it comes in at a completely different place, and it would register that you shot right here. So it, it actually can tell right where you're pointed on the screen by the flash of the screen scanning in on a LCD TV or like a, an LED TV, a newer TV or monitor, it can't work like that. So they have to do different things. But all we usually get are the old CRT ones. We're still fixing the CRTs and we're still fixing the guns. So, um, so by them putting a diode on this one, that ain't going to work, folks. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got a police trainer board set up over there, like a little test uh, rig. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this board right here and just replace this LED with the proper uh, photo transistor. And it is a L141G is the part number. So you can actually order these online. And um, if I can find some, I've got a few here somewhere. You can actually order these, they're not that expensive. L14G1, that's what you want. L14G1. Um, so we'll put one of those in and then we'll mount it back in here and I'll show you what it looks like once everything's back in it for our first test one. And then if I get this one to work, what I'm going to do is try to fix some of the other ones too, all in this same casing. Okay, so I've put the new photo transistor on it and uh, I checked this transistor just because it's so easy and it's right there and it tests fine. I've never had one of these test bad, and it's a little cheap one cent part, so it's easy to replace. For us, you know, for you, you might have to order it, but I'm going to show you one other problem that you run into. So the hose comes up the end of the gun, and then you have this little connector, right? Some of them have a four pin connector, some of them have a six pin connector. But if you look on there, on the six pin ones, you will see that there are two black wires right beside each other. So what that is, is that's the ground coming up and connecting to the board and then the ground leaving the board on the pin adjacent to it and going down and connecting to the switch that makes the trigger work. Both of them need a ground. So that's how they do it. They just jumper it through this little connector, right? So if you notice, if we called the red one pin one, the red wire, then the black wire is pin two. There is another black wire that, at pin three, a blue wire at pin four, a white wire at pin five, and yet another black wire at pin six, which runs down also to the trigger. So on the board, it is connecting pins two and three, the two black wires together, and it's also connecting pins five and six together, the two, the trigger and the and the uh, the wire going to the trigger, right? But the problem is, is that depending on which board you put in your game, the connectors are backwards. So how do you tell which way to put it? 
Well, if you look on the bottom of the board, you will have two pins that are connected together. So you see, if, you, if we line that up, you see how pins uh, from the bottom, pins two and three are connected together. And then on this particular one, the top two, pins five and six, are connected together. Well, since two and three are connected together, two and three, there's your two black wires that are connected together. It should go on like this, okay? Easy enough, right? But let's look at this one. So if I plug this in the same way on this one, pins two and three, look at the back. See how pins two and three are connected to the ground plane to the left and the right of it? From the top there? It's completely different. So if I plugged it in like that, it would be completely wrong and would not work. <sighs> so you have to you have to be careful of what you're plugging into is my whole point. Um, so anyway, we've got that replaced. Um, that tested out fine. We're going to put it back in. Since it had that LED on it, which there's no way that was going to work, that was likely the problem with it. But why was there an LED on it? It's because the thing was broke. So was the original problem with it that the phototransistor was bad? If so, we just fixed it by putting a new one on there, right? But if that was not the original problem, then we're going to have to troubleshoot some more. So hopefully we'll get one good one out of this one. So let me mount it all back in the gun and we'll look. Okay, folks, I've turned it sideways just so the, the uh, cable will fit on the desk here. Um, this this uh, trigger may pop out at any minute because <laughs> the spring's holding it. But basically, you have a lens up here. You have to clean that, put it in. Uh, you want to clean off the front of the optic. That hardly ever fixes it, though. If you have problems, it's usually not that. It's If the optic is broke, like if one of the legs is broke, that's usually your problem. Or this plug is has slid off. That very common happens all the time. Uh, this little spring goes like so to hold the trigger in. And then the trigger just kind of pushes against it. Until you get the top of the casing on, it's kind of touch and go. <laughs> that could pop out at any minute. And then the last thing is whenever you put this cable in, there is a flat spot there. So you need to rotate the cable when you put it together so that the flat spot is towards the... Um, watch that trigger. So that the flat spot... Uh, is towards the gun half. If it goes on that round spot, it's too too thick. So they make it flat on the sides just for the to line up with the sides of the of the gun. So when you have it like this, I would usually do it with two hands so I can move that, but I'll, I'll get it going and then we'll twist the thing. Basically, you want to kind of hook it in place to grab the trigger before it pops out. Bam! Just like that. So, uh, I will put one screw in it to hold it together, just long enough, maybe put it right there, just long enough for us to test it. Okay, folks, so I have a police trainer board set up on our test rig here, and I have plugged in our first candidate here. This is the one that had the LED on it that we replaced with the correct phototransistor. Now, there's only one screw in the gun, so it's just barely holding on here, but let's try it out, see what we got. There's a credit. Welcome to the Academy. Welcome to the There's Academy. a start. Let's see here. Boom! Now, I'm not really uh, going for accuracy, but it looks like we're back up and running at least. It's working pretty good. Alright, so this one, the only problem it seems like was somebody put a <laughs> an LED in the place of the phototransistor. You know what's going to kill me? is if that damn thing's not a phototransistor, and I've already said phototransistor 30 times. You know how many bad comments I'm gonna get over that? Oh, I forgot that this is like, you get more for accuracy. Okay, so that's cool. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it back apart and then we're gonna try to fix one of the other boards. And uh, we'll just test it in the same gun over and over and over again. All right, so the one was fine. We put it away in the drawer, and then I found this one, which looked pretty good. And I didn't put that optic on there. Someone else had replaced that. So that's another part number. It is part number... Um, 
I might have to get a light or something. I can barely read it. But that's an alternate part number to the L14G1 um, that we've been using. Is that what we've been using? Yes, L14G1, but this is a different one. So anyway, this one looked pretty good, so I thought, hmm, let me just try that one. So I put it in the gun and tested it. Worked fine, so I've got two here to work. All right, so on to this one. So this one, someone has put a replacement optic on it. The solder looks questionable. That may be broke or something, so I'm going to touch that up. And then look, the transistor's missing. And so that is a little tiny one. And looks like it's a 2N3904. Same problem, I can barely read it because of the light. Boop, boop. Still trying to read it. Yeah, 2N3904. So the little, uh, that transistor's missing. I guess it broke off or something. You can see where it was originally there. So on this one, um, I'm not going to test it first because I already know it's not going to work without that. So I'm going to add that in. This uh, uh, inductor here, I don't really know how they work, but you can kind of measure them like resistors. So I'm going to measure that one as compared to one on one of the other ones and make sure it's all right. And then uh, we'll test it and see if this one works. I think that's all that's missing. Sometimes you'll have stuff like, see how up here at the top it says J1 and there's something drawn there and there's nothing in that place. That looks like something's missing, but if you look on the back, um, the place, you can see that that's factory solder. So it never had anything in it from the factory. So, uh, But this transistor certainly did. It's been broke off. So you can kind of tell sometimes by that. So I'm going to replace that. I'm going to maybe reflow all this. And then I'll see what I can do with this. This looks kind of rough. <laughs> and then we'll test this one. All right, let's test it. Oh, yeah. Got to remember the, the bad guys. I don't have this one screwed together, so it, it's a little loose. But the board is actually working. I think we're good. It's not calibrated very well, though. All right, so I think we got another good one. Okay, here's our next one in our broke pile. Look how good this one looks. And someone has put a new L14G1 on there, probably hoping it would fix it. And then it did not fix it. This was in our bad bag. <laughs> okay, so this is the first one I've ever seen like this. I have, I have this other one that's the exact same board. This is the first one I've ever seen with this problem. If you measure this inductor here, like I said, you can measure it like a uh, resistor. Well, this one is 42 ohms, and I'm getting that consistently on a bunch of these boards. I mean, I've still got freaking tons of them. I'm getting that consistently on a bunch of these boards. And this one is the exact same board with the exact same part number. So I'm getting 42 ohms, but this one, which has some glue on it. So maybe they've replaced it at some point and they put a different part number in it. Well, this one is something like 1.8 megs. So that's uh, so one, 42 ohms or 1.8 megs. That's way up there. That's not even K. That's megs. <laughs> so uh, uh, maybe that inductor's bad. I don't know. I've never fixed one like that before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the inductor off this one just for giggles because it's the exact same board. So you know that's got to be the right part. I'm going to take that one off and then we'll test them outside. But I'm going to end up putting putting this one on there and seeing if that fixes it. Okay, so I'm getting 47 ohms out of this one and in circuit I'm getting it on a bunch of the other ones and out of circuit this is still giving me like 500 and it's bouncing around all over the place but it, it never goes any lower than like 600 ohms. Now, it could be that the purpose of an inductor it doesn't matter what the value is or something so maybe they'll both work maybe that's like the, the part that is correct I don't know but this one seems to match most of the other boards. So another thing I was going to mention too about testing stuff in circuit. If you think about the way things fail, you can often test things in circuit. So um, a resistor, whenever it fails, it usually doesn't short, it opens up. So 
because of that, if you test in circuit, if you test a resistor in circuit, usually, uh, and, and just the way that it works, you know, it, it, it's resisting, it's a straight piece of metal, but it's it's resisting current from here to here or whatever, you know. So if you test it in circuit, it should never be higher than whatever the resistor is. So this is, if this is supposed to be 47, and this one's 500K or whatever, uh, 5 meg or whatever it's measuring, it... it there's no way really that you're going to take it out of circuit and it's fine because if like if this is 47 and it's in there if I'm testing it in circuit no matter how the rest of the circuit is from here to here should be 47k or it could be lower because there might be something next to it that's lowering the resistance it should never really be higher now there's a few exceptions to that I've seen it I've seen it where um, if it's next to like a big coil, sometimes it, I guess because maybe my meter can't send enough voltage to, to test it or whatever, but I've seen a few times where that's not true. You take it out of circuit and it's fine, but in circuit it reads higher than the actual value of the resistor. So every once in a while you run into a situation like that, but a lot of times you can just check them in circuit. And, um, um, another thing is because it was in circuit, I was unable to test this diode because this diode is tied right to both sides of the that resistor or that in, inductor I guess it's it's called and so it's 47 ohms so this diode is reading almost a direct short because it's connected across it uh, but with the um, inductor out of the circuit now I can test the diode and it's fine and the one on this one's fine so you just got to think about stuff like that a little bit but um, basically resistors usually when they go bad they open up Capacitors, when they go bad, a lot of times they'll short, but sometimes they open up too. Um, so if you're if you're reading across a capacitor on the on the PCB and it's shorted, well, that's usually because that capacitor shorted. It shouldn't really be like that. And then if you take it out of the circuit, you can get a better idea. But a lot of times you can test resistors in circuit. You you can't for a hundred percent sure say that they're good, but you can easily spot if they're bad. You know. So, uh, like that one being higher than 47 ohms, it shouldn't be like that if it, you know, I mean, I shouldn't be getting more resistance if that resistor is in circuit because you can, you can just go across the resistor. It should give you 47 ohms. But anyway, it's like I said, that's not always 100%, but it's quick and dirty. So this one's bad, or it's at least way too high. But like I said, maybe inductors work that way. So we're going to take this, this one that I'm deeming good. And we're going to put it in this board that doesn't work but has a new optic. At some point, somebody put a new optic. <laughs> and we'll test this one next. Yeah, baby. So this is the one I replaced the inductor in. I don't even know what an inductor is, but it appears to have fixed it. So if your inductor is too big, <laughs> apparently that's a problem. You know what, folks? That looks like a hundred dollars. Okay, so this is the fifth one. I found this one in the stash and it looked pretty good and it had a nice optic on it. And so all I did was reflow the connector on the back and then I tested it and it worked fine. So that's five people. You know what that means? $125. Okay, so I'm down to, I only have four left of this type. And my interesting one is this one. Because I, so I tested, now this is the one that's missing the inductor because I stole it to fix the other one. Um, so, you know, I, I would guess all four of these had problems, but they ended up with no optics on them, right? But this one, I like this one because when I test the inductor, it's telling me like 3.8 megs or something, and that's not right. And so this one over here, which is, it's a slightly different type, but this is the same board, but I mean, this is the, this is different than this, you know? Um, this one is testing like 32 or something like that. Uh, ohms and this one's like 3.8 megs right so the problem with this board almost certainly was that inductor now the problem with this board may have been the optic or it may have been this chip i'd like to find one with this lm311 broke so i could fix it and see if that fixes them but uh on this one i'm almost certain that this is bad because it's just yeah, i mean obviously it's bad so i'm going to take this one off 
and then I'm going to steal the one off this board, which is kind of crazy because you'd think you'd try this first with the optic. But I'm pretty sure that since I know that one's bad, that's probably has to be what's wrong with this board. So if I, if I take this one off and swap it and put an optic on it, that will almost certainly fix this one. This one, if I put an optic on it, it might f fix it, but there may have been something else wrong. So we're going we're gonna to try it and see what happens. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one off and uh, we'll test it outside of it. All right, so you can barely see it, and I shouldn't really be, like whenever you test something, you shouldn't really touch both sides of it because, as you can see, you get a reading just from your skin. Your skin is conducted. Right? Well, you're not really supposed to do that. But I'm going to hold one side with my finger and try not to touch the other side. So this one is 33 or so. It's uh, green, blue, red. What would that be, people? My handy twistywristarcade.com chart here says, well, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> Five, six. So this doesn't work. Apparently they're, uh, they're marked differently. Okay, so uh, which one did we do? This one is 33, and this one is boy it looks good doesn't it but alas it is not it's completely open so this thing is completely burnt up now remember earlier I was saying uh, resistors open up right so in circuit I could tell that that thing was bad because it was a lot higher than 33 which the other one was so this thing is bad it looks fine so this one that the operator had marked bad I don't even know where I got these but um, he had marked it bad Almost certainly that inductor was the problem. So we'll put the other one on it and hopefully that'll fix that one. I'll put a new optic on it to it and we'll test it out. Yeah, buddy. It looks like they're shooting pretty much all around the screen too. So that's six people. How much money is that? That's right, it's $150. Doing pretty good here. Okay, people, I'm getting down to the dredges. So I've got this one that looks pretty good. And I'm excited about it, too, because it's got yet another inductor that's bad. So that one is uh, measuring at like 160K when the other ones I've been testing are like 30 or 40. So something major going on there. <laughs> Um, I guess it just burns the damn things up. I don't know. If I could chopstick this sucker, I could show you. Let's see if I can chopstick it. <laughs> Isn't this the best part of the video? You'll notice, too, I never cut any of this out. Mmm. If I was Asian and had used chopsticks, I would know how to do this better. Do you think I'll get it, or am I just going to keep struggling? Oh, hell. Oh, hell. <laughs> you know, come on. There's something going on with it. It's, it's not right. So, um, I'm looking around at some of my other parts boards. I've got this one, which is the same exact part. But this board looks pretty good. I don't know if I want to butcher that one. So I kind of want to find one. another one it's just the same part oh and by the way I have been corrected apparently that could be a photo transistor it just looks like a diode but if it is it's the wrong one you know that's got to be why it wasn't working uh, so uh, so one way or another I'm going to find another one of these inductors off of a parts board and I'm gonna swap it even if I have to pull it off of one of these nice clean looking ones but um, I'm going to swap it because that must be the problem with this board. I'm going to put an optic on it and then we'll test it again. And this will be board number seven, I believe. Okay, so I think that fixed this one too. So the problem, it looks like, is almost always the inductor. And I have never fixed one with that before, but uh, looking at a lot of those boards that I haven't been able to fix, like I needed that inductor for this one, 
All of them were bad. I mean, there must be 10 of them that I tested that tested way up there. So uh, test your inductor if it's up over like uh, one meg or something. Something screwed up on it. I don't know how they work, but it doesn't. They don't look fried. They all look they all look fine. But this is about the uh, what's this seven? I think that's seven people say how much money is that I think I saved myself a hundred and seventy five dollars by screwing around with these things okay folks so I put all the screws back in that one I've got it all buttoned up um, because I, I'm about out of those that particular style uh, that I'm going to be able to repair so I ended up with I've got two left and they are both missing the inductor and they're both missing the optic so I'm out of inductors is my problem. So I started going through and checking. Uh, that inductor's bad. That inductor's bad. I stole that one. They're all bad. All the ones that I've got left are bad. So uh, luckily, I found one good one on this board, which is the actual type that was in Area 51, right? Uh-huh, and so the plot thickens, right? So I've got the stuff for it, which means I've got the freaking part list for it, right? Now, the other ones you can probably figure out by the color bands on the on the part, but I took this one off that looked different. Like, it looked like this. It didn't look like the other ones, right? And I put it on that board, and it worked just fine, right? So the one that's in there, the one we just tested, had that weird inductor on it, this type. So this, these measure up real high. So since I've since it came off of one of these, I've got the parts list, right? So here's the parts list, and it is L2 inductor 5.6. I'm not allowed to pronounce that anymore, people. Look what they look what they put in a in the thing. I'm not allowed to pronounce that first letter. But the second one's an H. So this is an inductor, and it's described as a 5.6 UH. Now, when I say UF, everybody gets pissed off. But this says UH, people. I don't know. I'm a, that's what I'm going to go by, right? So I'm going I'm to search for these 5.6 UH inductors, and I'm going to order a whole pot load of them, right? I'm going to get like... I might get a hundred if they're cheap enough, right? But if they're expensive, I won't. But <laughs> if they're cheap enough, I'll get a hundred. And then uh, I've been saying L14G1 is the part that we're using. But look at this. I have found... Remember I was saying that I couldn't read the, the part number because it wasn't bright enough in here. Well, that is identified as Q2 on the schematics. And in the parts list, Q2, it tells you, is an MRD300. Wow. So it appears that an MRD 300 will also work. Um, because one of those that that, uh, that I just found working in here earlier had that part on it. So it looks like they're, that it's just a, a different part that will absolutely work on these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order a bunch of these MRD 300s and L14 G1s, whichever I can get a good deal on, and uh, a bunch of these inductors because... Uh, I think that'll fix most of the boards. So, my whole point is, if you get one of these and you're trying to work on it, what I've learned today by messing with them is it's often the, tran the photo transistor. Usually when you open it up, it might have the legs broke or something. Like, for instance, this one does, right? So it might have the legs broke. Uh, the photo transistor itself may be bad, but before you do all of that, check for physical damage. Remember we had the one that the transistor had broken off of. So check for physical damage, but then test the inductor. It should be down like 40 ohms or something like that. If it's near that, if it's 30 or it's 50, you're probably fine. But all the ones I tested that were bad were way to crap up there or completely open. Um, so it looks like that's the main problem on most of them. That's very cool. I had never fixed one with that inductor thing, but how many did we fix today? Maybe four with that? Um, very cool. So I went ahead and buttoned that case up because we're out of this particular type of them except for those two, and I don't have any inductors to fix it. And then on the other ones, there may be a few that I can fix without inductors, but all the ones that have inductors are bad. Now, 
this was a further revision of the board, and they called this the inductorless design. So they were able to redo it without an inductor. Apparently, that's another sign that those damn things went bad a lot. So on the newer ones, it's more surface mount stuff, so you know what that means. I'm probably not going to be able to fix as many of the newer ones, unless it's the photo transistor. Or something's, you know, obviously damaged. Could be solder on the connectors. So I think that'll end this one. So what I'll do is I will order those parts, and then if I get a, if I uh, get those in, maybe we'll do another video where we go through a bunch more of them. Like I said, it's not really, it's not really all that cost effective if you're doing it for your house. But since we do this all the time, and we've got a ton of these broke laying around, might as well try to fix them. Uh, here at our shop, I can order several of each part and have them in. And I think these I'm getting for like three dollars. Um, so I put one of these for three dollars and the inductor, I don't know, but if that's a, if that's a resistor, that's a 10 cent part, you know, and the little transistor I know is like a five cent part. So you can replace most of the stuff really freaking cheap. Yeah, the problem's going to be the shipping though. But for me, since I'm ordering 30, 40, 50 of them, it's no big deal. You split, you split it, spread it out among it. So so there we go. So I think we uh, we did pretty good today, right? Oh, let me, I'll show you the ones that I fixed. So you can see, in case you think that I was just swapping them or, or using the same one or something. Look at our, look at our Hall of Fame here, people. Look at this. I've got an entire box here full of them now. Look at this. Check that out. Check that out. Isn't that awesome? So, uh, I think maybe this is the this would be the one that the transistor was bad on. Maybe you know we went through and fixed them all. So yeah, we got seven, six there, and one in the gun. Let's give us a hand for hundred and seventy-five dollars. I really like that. That's pretty cool. So uh, <laughs> worked out pretty good. So I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Uh, if you guys know how to fix these things. So th this video, as far as I know, this is the only video I've ever seen where anybody actually tried to fix these things. I've seen videos where people talk about cleaning the gun and things like that, but actually doing component level repair on that, I've never read or seen anybody doing that. So uh, we learned a little bit today. But leave your comments below. If, you, if you've fixed them before and know more little tricks about them, let us know, because I'm going to try to fix all these, all these things. It's kind of fun. And I've got a whole bunch of the cases and everything, too, so I can put together like 30 different pistols. I've got blue ones, purple ones, red ones, green ones, tons of them. Uh, so if you got any tricks, let us know below. Oh, and another thing. Let me show you real quick this schematic. I don't understand it, but maybe y'all will. So we'll look at the schematic here. This is for the old one, right? And so maybe by looking at this video, you can tell kind of what's going on. All right, so this is the trigger. Or I believe it is. Uh, maybe. Yeah, it must be because there's only four wires that go out of it. So maybe you can understand that better than me. Well, there we go. So I guess where I'm going to go try to buy these. I'm going to see if there's any on Amazon. <laughs> Have you heard us talk about Amazon yet? We like all the old school stuff, right? So we figured out this neat little thing at Amazon that apparently everybody in the world knew about except me. So at Amazon, way back in the day, when they started Amazon, all they sold were books. And they didn't like, they didn't have any money to pay for advertising. So, you know, the way people usually advertise is they pay a bunch of money to an advertising company and run ads all over the place that nobody wants to see. So what Amazon did was they said, hey, if you have a web website where you sell books or anything, and maybe you put up a link to one of our books on our website, if someone clicks that link and comes to us, we're going to give you a referral fee if they buy something on Amazon. And they called it their Amazon Associates program. 
Well, it's and so the reason that they did that was so that they only paid advertising fees if something actually sold, like if they actually made some money. So they only used effective advertising. So the Amazon Associates program still is around. I had no clue about this, right? So below our videos, what we do is we put a link to something on Amazon, and we try to make it something relevant to the video. So if I can find these, like if I can find these little suckers, maybe I'll put a link down there. <laughs> Right or these or these little these little suckers here, and so if you go to Amazon, so if I say, hey, uh, here's those inductors we were talking about, and you go click on Amazon and you go look at it, and then you go, you know what, Ron, not really looking to buy any inductors today. It's nice to look at though, but you know what I do want? I need some cat food from Amazon. Well, if, after you click our link, if you go buy some cat food, guess who still gets a referral fee? Can you believe that? Isn't that freaking cool? So we've had people, and so we've, we figured this out a couple weeks ago. So we've had people in our videos that have been doing this to kind of support us, right? And it doesn't cost you anything, so it doesn't raise your price or anything. It's just if you click our link and go to Amazon, we sent you to Amazon. So Amazon pays us a referral fee. We have had people buy food. We have had people buy to toys. And we can't tell who's buying what or who's buying anything. All it does is tell us what was bought. It doesn't say who, where, what else they bought. It doesn't even say that they bought this and this. It just says this was bought, this was bought, this was bought, this was bought. And it gives us a little uh, a little fee, right? So we've had people, um, there's somebody out there that keeps buying computer parts for a couple people, it, look, it looks like. We appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, a gentleman the other day, we noticed, bought a surround sound system. Or maybe it was a lady. I don't know. But somebody bought a surround sound system. And it was real, you know, it was a pretty good little system. So we got a pretty little, good little referral fee for it. So I just think that's so freaking cool. Mainly because, you know, I'm making money off of it. And it doesn't cost anybody anything. But also because I love that it's like old school. Like we're using the, the old school Amazon book associates program from 15 years ago and it's still up and running. I was talking to our buddy Matt the other day and he said that his father used to do that. His father way back in the day he used to run websites where you know way back before things changed and became more like they are now but he would run websites where he just listed stuff for sale and people would go click it and it was all Amazon stuff and he he, he made a pretty good little uh, little little stack of money. I wonder if he made $175. Cuz that's what I made by fixing seven of these boards. <laughs> I feel like Ted DiBiase. <laughs> so, if you can go click the Amazon thing and go buy something on Amazon. We've been thinking that people are going to start trolling us with the Amazon thing cuz you know what you could do? You could go buy something ridiculous on Amazon, and it would send, like you could go buy, uh, <laughs> you can't send a message though. If you could send a message, it would be cooler. But you could go buy uh, a book called Inductors 101, and that would really send me a message, wouldn't it? <laughs> but anyway, so we appreciate the people that have been doing that. Uh, you know, that, that that's really cool of y'all. We're not going to be joining Patreon because we don't we don't really feel comfortable as a business taking people's money. You know, the Amazon thing, it doesn't cost you anything, so it's kind of cool and it's fun and we're getting Amazon's money. And you are getting to send us Amazon's money. Very cool, right? But uh the Patreon thing, we don't want to sign up for that. We, you know, if other people are on Patreon, that's completely fine. I don't have any problem against it, but we run a business, so I don't really want you to send us money to keep us in business that's not going to that's not uh, that's not necessary we're going to stay in business we're going to keep filming videos too with or without any of this stuff um because it's fun and we just like you know documenting it like literally today i did not know that those inductors could fix that and now i do so i learned something hopefully you learned something too a lot of you out there that really know what you, your stuff are probably saying oh, <laughs> well, god didn't even know about the inductors i mean who the hell doesn't know about inductors but to us, you know, we're learning as we go, people. Learning as we go. We've been doing this a long time, but we've been throwing a lot of these in that bag, right? So, so uh, 
I'm very happy that we were able to fix that. So leave your comments below. If you can support us on Amazon, that's very cool. Uh, uh, a lot of people have asked about Patreon. We're not going to be doing that. So go support someone else on Patreon if you can. That would be cool. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Good old Atari. They always come through for me with their Area 51 manual. I guess it was midway by that point. but um, Where is the inductor on this thing? What they're calling that a bead and a bead. Uh, inductor, where are you? I don't even see it. Oh, here it is. Oh, no. Over here they call it 5.6 MH. <sighs> Boy, I'm never going to be able to figure out how to pronounce that. Luckily, someone will tell me. So leave, <laughs> leave your comments about the UH and the MH below. Give us a thumbs up for filming it for you, because we didn't have to do this, people. This can, you know, it takes a little bit more time to do this. I probably could have got more of them fixed. I'm just kidding. You know we wouldn't do anything without you. Give us a thumbs up for filming it. Leave your comments below. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We do videos like this all the time. And to the people that say I am overly loquacious, I agree with you. This is a long video. We'll see you on the next one. If I buy 2,500 of them, they're only nine cents. <laughs>